Dr. Sintil Kumar, uh, Professor Basar Rao, uh, Dr. Sintil Kumar, and the faculty members of uh, the School of uh, Chemical Engineering of MIT Academy of Engineering, other dignitaries, dear students and participants. So I'm very happy that uh, you know you are organizing this 16th National Chemical Engineering Conference. I remember that I had come to your uh, college uh, in 2015 when you had the students uh, escape con there. So <clears throat> that is almost five years ago now. <clears throat> so uh, this is a new way of life for all of us. And so let us uh, enjoy this moment. So what is there today? Today is a new trinity change, challenge and opportunity, okay? And uh, in this Trinity, we have to change, uh, like the butterfly change their colors. Uh, and we have to find new ways. So from a constrained place, we must go out. This is what it says, and you must take risk. So we live in a materialistic world and need energy in every form to survive and progress. Never have so many compelling technological problems have occupied positions of prominence in our system of values. Every moment something happens unexpectedly imposing a new challenge. Coronavirus changed everything. The way we think, live, meet, behave or rejoice. None of this was imagined a year ago. I'm sure about it. Constantly on our minds is the fear of the unknown and the uncertain future in every activity. A tiny creature, if you may, has held the world to the ransom with devastating effects. So this is where we invoke God, right? All of us invoke. And this morning when you uh, presented Pasadhan, I still remember my school days. We used to sing it every day in my school. And so I'm very familiar with the word. So when do we invoke God? If you are a believer in God, if you don't believe in God, maybe you believe in nature. So it is at the time of difficulty you believe God, you remember God, and you are cornered. And we always say, oh God, it means that somebody should help you, are, you are literally cornered. And you want peace, prosperity, luxury, and concept of God in every religion is omnipotent, is omnipresent, all inclusive, all accommodative, pardoning everybody that is what the concept of god is okay so for me you know i said god is a chemical engineer now many of you will be amused why did i say so and that was when i was president of indian institute of chemical engineers there was this national seminar in bhubaneswar on 14th and 15th february in 2001 and uh, this is long time ago almost 20 years ago and uh, there was a conference which was organized by the industries in that particular area, Kalinga area. And uh, there was a chief guest who was chief secretary of the government of Urisa. And he did not realize to whom uh, he's addressing. And he said, okay, Bhuneshwar will be called Cybereshwar. We will only promote IT industry and we won't want, don't want chemical industry. We don't want polluting industry. That is what he said. And since I was the president, I had the next opportunity of talking after his spoke. And I said, wait a minute, sir. I want to educate you. I don't want any polluting industry. And who gave you that impression that chemicals are polluting? Let us look at it holistically. And if you believe that chemicals are not required in today's world, then from top to bottom, from morning to evening, from dawn to dusk, we live in the world of chemicals and molecules. And if you want to get rid of them, you will have nothing to hide your modesty and you'll have to go back to Stone Age. And I said, God is a chemical engineer. And the very next day, uh, the, and I, I defended the chemical industry and I said, what new types of processes could be adopted? And the next day in the new chemical uh, Indian Express in local newspaper, there was a headline 
a professor from UDCT that time it was UDCT said so and so. And it became, you know, at the same time, the chemical industry people met me and they said, sir, thank you very much for, you know, supporting us. But the outcome of that was when I came to Mumbai, our students came to know that I said God is a chemical engineer. Now, I might have said it amusingly, but I meant something else to convey a message. And that message was given in the previous slide. That is, it is all inclusive, all accommodative, and it can add to peace, prosperity, luxury, comfort. And so that is what God is doing. And uh, so the students printed T-shirt, God is a chemical engineer. They were very happy because, you know, during those days in 2001, there was a lot of uh, emphasis on IT and all, everybody, whether they understood or not, whether they had any teachers or not, people went for, you know, this IT related courses. Even some of the students from ICT also left. They said, okay, there is some new panishing. And so the students printed these t-shirts. And then I said, wait a minute, God is a chemical engineer, but chemical engineers are not gods. And that, that settled the issue. And this, uh, you know, the interesting part is that I gave a talk on TEDx, the TEDx ICD, and this is there on the YouTube. And if you are interested, you can watch this. But I introduced this, God is a chemical engineer, and I said, why I'm saying this, and I just defended it. And I said, take any megascopic, mesoscopic, macroscopic, nanoscopic, microscopic, or atomic process, in chemical engineering, what we teach it is red processes. And so we have energy and material balance ranging from all these scales. And then we, we say that, okay, these are red processes, then we deal with space, time, volume, everything. And so what does it mean? This is what the God is doing, the protector and provider. So chemical engineers deal with anything related with, so the best example in our human body, all principles of chemical engineering, whatever subjects you learn, whether it is reaction engineering, transport processes, fluid flow, heat transfer, mass transfer, process control, name it. Everything is there in the human body. And we deal with systems which may be molecules or atoms. And this is very interesting. This is what God is doing and that is what God is supposed to do. So I said, therefore, God is a chemical engineer. And so that is what the job of God is. And so, and so what I said further, God is a molecular engineer because chemical engineers deal with molecules. The scales can be anything. And that is what is happening. And so and then I also gave a lecture sometime and I said, well, is there any beauty, charm and challenge left in chemical engineering thereafter? And I proved that how it is very important. And I said, from home to genome, how chemical engineering is important. And this I gave as a talk at my presidential address in 2001 in, in, my, in Chennai. So, so let us understand what is chemical engineering. It is true that chemical engineers are compatible with chemistry, but they do much more with this knowledge than just make chemicals. In fact, the term chemical engineer is not even intended to describe the type of work a chemical engineer performs. Instead, it is meant to reveal what makes the field different from the other branches of engineering. So this is the definition of chemical engineer. So in fact, there are many attributes of chemical engineering that chemical engineering enjoys a special and critical place in scientific and engineering disciplines. Chemical engineering is highly science-based. And if you are weak in your sciences, be it chemistry, physics, mathematics, biology, you can't do a good job as a chemical engineer. So, so it is accommodative. In other words, chemical engineer can do somebody else's job, including that IT or computer or whatever. And so this is and the versatility of the profession and the way in which chemical engineering is applied to the world of atoms, molecules, and molecular transformations. No other engineering discipline does it. And that is why chemical engineering has a special place. And this will define something which is called a systems engineering approach. In chemical engineering, we always deal with systems. 
we define a boundary, materials and energy go inside the boundary and something moves out. And there is a processing time. And what we are interested in, we are interested in optimizing the system. We want to have minimum energy consumption and we want maximum output. That's so-called process intensification, the new term which is being used nowadays. This is what is they are talking about. So in the system, there is a boundary and we have a material and energy balance. So we have initial conditions and the boundary conditions and we saw and that is how transport processes came into being. So this has a very interesting history also. So chemical engineering and green chemistry as disciplines were born in the same concept and that was the Solvay process. Solvay process in 1865, George Davis, the factory al alkali inspector of the, uh, Her Majesty the Queen in the in UK, he introduced this concept. And similarly, Norman Lewis in MIT, there it was called course 10, course X. Okay, that was the 10th branch of discipline that they are there in MIT. They started. So we are dealing with system engineering approach in chemical engineering. So chemical engineering deals with analysis of red processes, be they physical, chemical, biological, even atomic. Perhaps you would be surprised to know that when there was not much of a spread of chemical engineering in India, Atomic energy employed the maximum number of chemical engineers because they found, in fact, the then chairman of atomic energy, Dr. Homi, said now was an ICT chemical engineer, passed out in 1943. So we do analysis of systems and system boundaries and space and time. This is what we concentrate upon. So whether it is a computer chip or something, we can always apply the chemical engineering principles. And this is where we deal with either a container or a vessel or column. That is what we always do. So it may be a closed system and open system and the closed and open has a different meaning in chemical engineering. It is not just keeping the wall open. So from atom to atmosphere, we do it with system engineering approach and their material and energy flow with reference to system. And that is what chemical engineering is. And this, these principles can be applied to any branch of engineering. In fact, you know, and perhaps you know that chemical engineering is the only discipline where they also study mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and civil engineering principles, you know, along with others. And nowadays, biological uh, sciences in engineering. So, chemical engineer is a multilingual entity. Okay, that means you can speak somebody else's language and chemical engineers are adept at all these things. And that is what, you know, you speak many languages. And so what do we do in this particular case? So it can talk comfortably with all branches of science, engineering, mathematics, medicine, and technology. In every field, chemical engineering is applied. Perhaps you are not aware of, uh, you know, the, the um, American system. In America, they don't directly go to medicine. They have to have one you know, degree before they go to that. And what happens in that? So the majority of these medical doctors, they have a basic degree in chemical engineering. So very interesting. So I drew this particular thing on this particular slide and I posted this in ICT when I was the vice chancellor. You will see all the posters in ICT are prepared by me with my own computer. So perhaps people don't know that. And I have put this particular slide here. Why I show this? This is to show to the students what sort of systems we are designing, what sort of things we are doing, and the versatility of the profession. Right from computer modeling, computer simulations, to all sorts of material and energy balances on small scale, mega scale, and whatnot. That is, that is what we do. So it's a very, very versatile discipline. So I then I will come to the, because the, the commoners do not know. And sometimes I used to say this jokingly because during this COVID pandemic, many of you might have, you know, watched this, this great ethics, Mahabharata, Ramayana and Mahabharata. And you saw there was Swayamvar. That is, you know, the, the girl, the bride had the, cho the choice of, you know, uh, the privilege of choosing the group, isn't it? 
So I used to say this very jokingly. I said, suppose there is a bunch of people that are all sorts of engineers and chemists and mathematicians, everybody, and there is a huge line. And the girl is asked to choose one of the grooms from that. She will never, never choose a chemist or a chemical engineer because she will think they are dirty fellows, okay? And so they will perhaps will remain unmarried in today's world because the girls also don't know that chemical engineering is so much better. So I ask this question, how do you begin your day today? Some of these things, what you see uh, on, the, on the screen, you might have touched them. Okay, and because of this COVID, you must be washing your hands every day with soaps and detergents and disinfectants and whatnot. Or when you got up in the morning, you touched your mobile phone and try to find out who has sent you a message. It may be a gossip, but you got it. Nowadays, people don't go to the temple or to their temple within the home. They will look at the mobile phone to see whether there was any missed call or these days it is what's a WhatsApp message. That's all gossip. And then you see this particular slide. How many components are there in that mobile phone? The small computer having mega power, so much of a memory and all. How many polymers are used, the glasses, the silicon chip, all those things. You don't imagine. Okay, so what you think that this is all, and you will not collate that with chemical engineering or the chemical industry. They are all produce of chemical industry and chemical engineering profession has added to that. But unfortunately, people don't say this. Well, why go far away? Look at the Olympic records. See how, what is the motto of Olympic movement? Many of you perhaps know. And why so many records are broken every Olympics? And think of the equipment and the attire of the players and the synthetic materials and the tubs and the shoes and whatnot. In this particular slide, I have included everybody. And these are major things where records are broken every Olympics. People are going fastest. Hussein Bolt will be broken next time. His record will be broken. How, what sort of materials? These are material chemistry, synthetic materials. And so they are lighter. They are comfortable. Okay, they are attractive. They resist friction. That is, they are frictionless, virtually frictionless materials. And sometimes these people also take drugs, okay? Maybe to increase their strength. So in other words, the, the Olympic motto, CTS, LTS, FTS, meaning faster, higher, stronger, would not have all been possible, but for chemistry and chemical engineering and chemicals, the kind of chemicals and materials which are used, all of them make this possible. So just now name the products which are used in Olympics and how are they made? Whether they are fibers, synthetic fibers, or the computers, the air pass, all sorts of gadgets, the packaging, pure water, beverages, shoes, rackets, okay, colors, lubricants, whatnot. All those things, how are they made? And what is your role in that? What is the role of chemical and allied industry? It includes say, anything from petroleum refineries to you know pharmaceuticals and whatnot, okay? All this would not have been possible without the industry. So I will give you this challenge because this, this kind of pictures you see every day, somebody is using a mask, you are using a mask and going somewhere. Can you show any three man-made materials or products without the use of chemicals? Show this. And why, for example, you are sitting in an office or somewhere in your home and using these nice chairs and how are they made? What sort of dresses these people are using here? How are these dresses made? Why they look so attractive? What about the you know perfumes and whatnot they are using? The stocking, you know, this guy with beautiful, you know, very nice shoes. These are all synthetic materials. And if you scratch your head to find out whatever you see around, including the mobile phone, which you are holding in your hand, might be sending some message to somebody right now. Nothing can be made without chemicals. And if that be the case, a price of 100 million pounds is waiting for anybody since 2008. You have to name three products, and you say that these are man-made products, but no chemical is used, you will get this 100 pounds. 
In fact, I told the Indian uh, uh, Chemical Industries Associations, I said, okay, let us have a price of 100 crore rupees. Let us give this price to anybody who comes up with this, you know, any product which is not synthetic material and then, uh, where chemical is not used. Nobody can throw it. In other words, the chemical and allied industry is an essential industry and the role of chemical engineering is going to increase day by day. As I said, it is accommodative. So what has happened, you know, go to United States and any European countries as go to the advanced nations, they have changed the names of chemical engineering departments. Earlier, they used to be chemical and environmental engineering or chemical and petroleum engineering when petroleum was a boom. Now they say chemical and biological engineering. Sometimes they are biomedical engineering. Why? Because just to show to the world that chemical engineers are very, very accommodative and therefore these principles can be used to anything. In fact, uh, while teaching my courses on reaction engineering and all our resident time distribution theories, I used to tell my students very jokingly, how are you coming? You are traveling by train, you sit in the train, you can't move here and there and you're just pushed outside like plug flow. And in plug flow, we know that you cannot, uh, you, you have no freedom to move, but in a back mix flow, then once again, you come out, it becomes back mix. People are just roaming around on the platform, going here and there. Somebody's catching the train, somebody's trying to go out, catch another bus. And it's all chaotic, it's like back mix flow, this so-called stir tank flow, okay? So what is going to happen in future? We'll have only two sciences the science of the dead and science of living. And same is the case. And this is where chemical engineering again becomes very, very important because it can. So these are some of the buzzwords, energy, water, food, affordable healthcare, environment, carbon footprint, industry and infrastructure, sustainable development, GDP. These are the words you really hear, hear read every day. It's not that, you know, nobody has seen it, open a newspaper and they do not read it. It is there. So, this has been affected by COVID. And in fact, this COVID has also provided a lot of opportunity to, to all of us to be innovative and develop new types of products and processes. So where artificial intelligence could be used. So what I did, I when I started these two new campuses in uh, Bhuvaneshwar and in Maratwara, I said, I'm not going to have this traditional thing. Let us have this so-called integrated MTech program where the student goes to industry every four months. So in 15 trimester, it is a trimester system, there will be 15 trimester, every four months the student in industry, he learns, comes back, and the batch is divided into two. So half of the batch is always in industry. And so during first four months and last eight months, they are together, otherwise they are never together. But they study everything. And so they are given lessons in everything. In fact, very, very first trimester after they come from the 12th grade, they learn something which they normally do in MSc, analytical chemistry, artificial intelligence, things like that, including Python uh, modeling and MATLAB and you name it. And when the student goes to industry, he learns many things. So when I introduced this program in 2018, after four months, the students went to industry and believe me, Two of the students filed patents. They were just 12 students, 12th grade students. That means they can be innovative. So this is the beauty of our profession. So look, yeah, and this, this, you know, I'm showing this slide. This is say this is around 1080. That time, like we have this corona pandemic, uh, COVID pa pandemic now, there was a black day called the bubonic plague. The bubonic plague kill almost 70% of the European population. This is what happened afterwards, the so-called Spanish population uh, plague in, in 1916 or 18 during that time. See, the population has plummeted and afterwards it was slowly. So this population of the world was less than half a billion. And from here, you come to 1856. This is when the birth of organic chemical industry happened. And that was because of the William Perkin. And from there, the population has risen steeply. You can see that we don't know what will be the population in the year 2100. Will it be 7 billion? Already we are 7 crossed 8. It will be 8 billion in 2025. Will it be 10 billion or 14 billion? And if it is 11 billion, Earth cannot sustain it. 
the so this 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 we know the danger so this part during the industrial revolution what it is showing here and earlier it was only agricultural revolution people migrated from one place to another place so you can see in the human history chemicals have added to the beauty and charm of this world and so this is what we say now we are talking about sustainability which uh, my friend professor basaura also said how do you feed these people how do you provide shelter for them and what will be their energy needs these are the questions to be asked and this is where the sustainable development goals of the united nations you know uh, uh, have been defined and these are 17 goals and i will tell you the very important zero hunger by 2030 and no poverty so what it means in that no poverty and zero hunger that is how is good things happen is unless you have materialistic need which is met or the energy need which is met and and the population is increasing that means the tillable land is going down day by day we have to produce more food from same acreage and we have to put, uh, provide it for many people and it has to be equitable distribution so these are very interesting challenges and all of these things then we are talking about good health we are talking about quality education gender equality uh, clean water and sanitation and you know all those things are affordable you know uh, energy decent work and economic growth industry innovation and infrastructure you can imagine all these are very important life under what layer what are i wipe above is life on land all those things are very very important and add to that in 1999 the the, the grand challenges for engineering were presented by the us national academy of engineering and all of these have chemical engineering component as a major component make solar energy economical manage the nitrogen cycle and you remember in the 20th century the haber bash process of making synthetic ammonia ammonia was the greatest contribution of chemical industry to humankind and that led to comfort luxury and what you know okay advanced health equipment preventing nuclear terror advancing personalized learning providing energy from fusion providing access to clean water engineering better medicines securing the cyber place engineering the tools of scientific discovery developing carbon sequestration methods that's what we are talking about you know the so called global warming and how to stop it restoring and improving urban infrastructure reverse engineering the brain that means if you understand the functioning of the brain you brain you can do many more things and enhancing the virtual reality that is what in today's world we have to do experiments also virtually that's what we are doing in ICT so you can imagine many of these things have led to this is my favorite slide and this tells you everything about your profession and the contributions chemical and allied industries makes to the modern society be that fuels energy material basic needs luxury comfort and quality of life I must also tell you the life expectancy of uh, you know people in India during the period 1900 was 38 years for male and 43 years for females. Now it has gone to 68 and 73 respectively. Quite interesting. Really. The ladies always live longer. They beat the men in their own game. They are interested. Girls are interested in their makeup, but they should complement themselves because their genetic makeup is better than the males so ladies complement yourself and that is what is really happening and this has happened because of the contribution of the chemical and allied industry new types of drugs have been found new types of luxurious materials what we do all those things and they start from simple petroleum or coal okay natural gas and air and sulfur these are the elements and you add phosphorus to that and you see you make commodity chemicals, specialty commodity chemicals, intermediate finished products, and you know, the common uh, goods which the normal people see the textiles, um, food supply, transportation, housing, recreation, communication. The beauty of chemical industry is that 
70% of the products are never seen or sold off the shelf. That is the beauty. The chemical industry is a consumer in itself. And that is what people don't understand. That is why they take it for granted. When you look at the mobile phone, which is always with you. So you say, oh, it's a computer engineer, smart guy. Okay? But you don't know that the materials which are required to make it, they are all made by chemical and allied industry. We require silicon, which is parts per billion pure, not even million, parts per billion pure, pure silicon is required. So in other words, I, so why this is because chemistry, chemical engineering has a chemistry as a soul, but at the same time, it derives from all other branches of science and technology. Chemical engineering is highly mathematical. Many people think that chemical engineers only learn chemistry, which is nonsense. They don't know. Chemical engineering is highly mathematical. Next to chemical engineering, it is electrical engineering, which is mathematical. Okay. And so you can imagine the attributes that perhaps most distinguishes chemistry from the rest of the sciences is the ability of chemists to control the structure of matter at the molecular level from complex natural products like vancomycin to nanoparticles to whole things. And since we are living in the materials world, we require regular materials. These are synthetic materials. We require functional materials. We require smart materials, but we are using in, uh, in our mobile phones and engineering materials. And they are all created by chemical and other industry. So what is the prediction of future? Is it an extension of today? No, the answer you see, I have shown some molecules here. Just to tell you that even the thinking, human thinking is a chemical reaction. What happens in your body? And so you can see very interesting thing. This is, I just added this slide to show you that the bachelor's degree holders in the United States, they get the highest salary in comparison with the rest and the spectrum of industries where they work. Okay, spectrum of industries. You can see all sorts of things are being done, used, and imagine the industry on the left hand side and the, and the spectrum of chemical industries, chemical engineers working in different areas. Even in electronics industries, almost 16% chemical engineers work in USA. Next to chemical engineers, it is the mechanical engineers in USA, not the computer engineers. This is, should be known. So we are talking about industry four, okay, and many of you are, I will not go into the details of that, but what is industry four? The increasing convergence of digital, physical, and biological assets is known as industry four. This is the so-called fourth industrial revolution, which is creating unprecedented opportunities for chemical engineers and whatever you see on this. So industry four, uh, okay, we have sensors, all sorts of sensors have to be developed, Internet of Things, virtual reality, simulation, all these things are transforming the modern manufacturing. So how does it help the chemical engineers, analysis of digital data? So we can see that these are the various things, these are, these are being affected by digital sciences. So we can look at sensors, developing of sensors. There are again, chemical sensors or biological sensors where chemical engineers will work. So in chemical engineering four is the increasing convergence of digital, physical, chemical, and biological phenomena in industrial evolution. And that is creating a lot of things. So chemical technology will be new reactions and processes which are eco-friendly, safe, cheap, using modern sensors, the industrial internet of things, virtual reality, process simulation, process safety, all those things are happening in chemical engineering. And so, we can develop smarter products, smarter processes in, in software supply chain. So chemical engineers are going to be there. And this is the uh, slide where you have a reactor and you can see that a material A, B, C is going and the gas is coming out and all sorts of things can be done. Data could be collected by using AI, the deep learning algorithm. That means you can study this and this should be part of chemical engineering. It is a, for a chemical plant. So then a hazardous reaction can be conducted by using this. So, so you can look at the upstream industry, whatever you see, and also the case of robotics in agriculture and for fertilizers and insecticides and all those things. So, and this, this situation is daily in, in Mumbai, city like Mumbai. Okay, we have a growing population. We don't know how to accommodate these people inside the train uh, compartment. 
and uh, at the same time our age is increasing more senior citizens are there and this is where what professor rao was talking about our sustainability it has to be economical social and environment friendly these three spheres of sustainability this is where chemical engineering is going to play a very very important role okay so and the genomic research has made boundaries between biology and chemistry disciplines so chemistry serves to provide the interpretation of biological phenomena in terms of molecular structures and chemical principles and processes so we can apply reaction engineering and transport processes here and very importantly biology cannot function without chemist chemical laws so cells obey the law of chemistry the laws of chemistry so we know so what we learn this is where nature is our guide and that is what as i said in the beginning you can call it god or nature whatever nature has developed both templated and non templated biosynthetic machinery including the ribosome dna and rna polymerases polyketide and peptide synthesis and metabolic enzymes to make complex molecules with diverse function so in today's world we are making materials with diverse functions and this is where chemistry will comes to uh, to our rescue or biology will come to our rescue and so they also we have to do this and nature's chemical factories are what living organisms can carry out a remarkable array of complex functions using natural molecules and molecular assemblies ranging from antibiotics and enzyme to ribosome and polysynthetic structures so we are moving from structure to function you look at the silk worm it takes a molecule monomer and comes out with a polymer now tomorrow the world will be that so we have to be equipped with this new knowledge in chemical engineering area and this is where chemistry and biology will come to our rescue chemistry is increasingly shifting from structure to function chemist will need to develop better strategy to efficiently generate molecules and system of molecules with desired physical chemical or biological properties in order to meet the biomedical energy and environmental needs so all these things are related to chemical engineering and so we will have improved strategies for generation of molecules where defined physical chemical and biological properties will be there so for example these are the molecules which do not exist for instance sulfur and silicon and carbon bond does not exist in nature but man has created so that means we can beat the nature and so applications of these are in chemical biological and material science i won't go into the details of this just and so i will stop here in fact the molecular machines the nobel prize which was given to savage stadart and thringa they worked on molecular machine that may have to divide the molecular machine which will work like robot so very interesting concept so chemical engineers being so versatile will adapt all all these things and make things from scales ranging from atom to atmosphere so that is the beauty so when i said in the beginning as a joke god is the chemical engineer now i started believing my own joke that oh seriously oh my god god is really a chemical engineer and in that way you should feel very very happy that you are doing chemical engineering degree and i am also sure some of the girls and boys will find a life partner and those those, those parents who are saying that okay don't marry a chemical engineer or chemist will refrain from making those comments with these few words i must tell you that in our human body everything is replaceable by bi compatible materials the medical field uses many of those things which are taught in chemical engineering and so in future by the year 2100 actually the human body can live up to 150 years so by 2100 there will not be a problem of life but what to do with that long prolonged life so people may find some other profession or vocation to you know, live happy life and so many problems you know depression is one of the biggest killers you not had that attack depression is the biggest killer so we we'll have to find out new types of medicines all those things are going to be there and so as i said if by 95% of the human body is replaced by bio compatible materials so what is remaining only 5% which we inherited from our mother soul and those of you who are fond of uh, literature vedas and purans and as i am i will quote bhagavad gita and it is said in bhagavad gita by lord sri krishna while talking to arjun 
he said in the back of it, Nainam Chandanti Vastrani Nainam Dharati Bhavaka Nachakleda Yamta Apu Nasoshayati Maruta. The soul cannot be burned by fire, cannot be dried with wind, okay? cannot be clothed, cannot be cut. So it moves from one body to another body. Now, if our human body, we are going to replace everything and live longer, already our soul has gone from 100% natural body to 95% synthetic. That is what is going to happen in future. So chemical engineering has a great future. And since you are chosen this field, I wish you all the best, whatever you do, okay? And use the chemical engineering principles. In fact, I will tell you also, it is not a joke, but chemical engineers' marriages last longer than any other engineers' marriages. The maximum divorces are with IT guys. And you ask him, you go to Bangalore and say, oh, 72, 75% couples divorce within six months to two years. But in chemical engineering, yes, their, their marriages last very long. So that is another thing. So this is what I want to tell them. With these few words, I wish you were prakal, a great prakal. Okay, and I say that. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for that great, great presentation. Yeah.